Hey, we're still on the edge of the Pacific Ocean here. I just wanted to think about what, what's special about the Pacific in terms of its climatology. Its uh, Pacific Ocean is dominated by the uh, phenomenon El Nino, and uh, it also has a counterpart called La Nina. Oh, and yeah. they're tied up into the behavior of warm water in the Pacific and the atmospheric effects. And because it oscillates, it's called the Southern Oscillation. It's a phenomenon right. of the Southern Hemisphere. And it's a dominant signature for rainfall in India, South Africa, Australia, South America. So there's a lot of emphasis uh, on, on uh, what, what was called the Southern Oscillation and its effects on climate. Oh. And it basically, strong trade winds blow the warm surface water across to the Australia side of the Pacific. Okay. And it ponds up there. It ponds up 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters high. Right. It doesn't seem like yeah. much. But and you can do the effect in your bathtub if you want. You can just take water and pond it up at the end of the bathtub and you can get it ponded there. <laughs> but if you stop, yeah. then it will rush back. Course, yeah. So if you yeah. stop the trade winds and they slow down, or we don't know really what the trigger is, but we think it's the trade winds decrease. Then this pool of warm water, which is in the West Pacific, migrates across the equatorial region and ends up off South America. Right. And South America, darn it, has cold water and dry <laughs> climates and deserts. Yeah, and it's not yeah. supposed to have warm water and no. rainfall. No, that's right. And Australia is supposed to be, uh, people think Australia is a dry continent, but yes. believe me, the tropics are wet. <laughs> and uh, when this warm water moves off the coast and disappears, Australia is surrounded by cold water and it ends up in drought. Right. Especially in, in the eastern half of Australia. Okay. And, and that's the Southern Oscillation. Oh, right. Since then, studies have been done of ocean temperatures to see that there is a North Pacific Oscillation oh, right. that controls okay. weather in North America, mm -hmm. uh, although the Southern Oscillation is picked up in California and Florida. Right. Uh, and then there is a North Atlantic Oscillation, and it's very similar, and it controls weather, change, climate, short chain, climate change in Eastern Canada and Western Europe. Right. And these oscillations uh, go to their extreme end, they fail about every three to five years. Right. So that there's a dominant average condition, yes. and then there's time when they turn off and, darn it, you're <laughs> supposed to have cold water of South America and drought conditions and yeah. deserts, and yeah. suddenly you end up with warm water and rain and floods. And, yeah. and so it's responsible for this short-term so, climate change. So how often, what's the periodicity of these cycles of La Nina to El Nino? Well, uh, El Nino is the dry one. Uh, right. Sorry, is the... Uh, yeah, the dry one for Australia, Australia, the wet one for South America, yeah. and, and the reverse is La Nina. Yeah. It's called El Nino because it's an annual phenomenon that appears around Christmas time yeah. in Chile, and El Nino is capitalized as a Christ child. Yes, of course. Uh, La yeah. Nina has been said as Mother Gaia or Mother Nature. <laughs> it's the opposite. Right. Um, but in essence, the uh, effect, the annual effect that you see, it becomes exaggerated right. every f three to five years. Okay. Um, so it's not a you can't, it's not a regular, well it's a regular thing, but it's not precise. You know that once yeah. it's triggered, once this water starts off across the Pacific, you can't yeah. stop it. Oh, right. You can try it in your bathtub, and you yeah. let go of that water, you can't stop it's, it's it, going. it'll go back to the other end of yeah. the bathtub. Yeah. And it takes in a two year cycle to, to build back up the trade winds to strengthen right. and pile this water back up. So we Let's know see. that once it starts, yeah. you, you got a two year sequence yeah. of just letting it go. I see. Uh, but you can have uh, El Nino's uh, uh, every, minimum every two years, Okay. but they tend to be three to five, and they can go nine years between. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, what's happened recently in the last 20 years, we've had prolonged El Nino, oh, right. where it's gone more than two years. It just hasn't come oh, back. Right. Or you get uh, it coming back, but the La Nina effect is very weak. Right. And you immediately back into another El Nino. So yes, for all intents yes. and purposes, you look at six years, and you, all you find in six year record is drought in Australia. Wow. So, so why, why are we seeing this change in the frequency of El Nino um, and La, La Nina changing? It, it could be, uh, my view is that there's resonance uh, between the oceans, so mm. the North Pacific Oscillation is beating away, and it's not necessarily beating away at the same time as the Southern Oscillation. Right, okay. Uh, and there are times when you can couple the oceans. Right. And couple the effect. There's also something in the Indian Ocean we we know yes. very little about. Yeah. And uh, I think we're just seeing that there's some coupling. Right. There's also a periodicity. Uh, there's cool, warm pools moving around in the Antarctic Circumpolar right. uh, current, 
and uh, it tends to travel past Australia if you mark one of the warm pools. There are two warm pools, two cold pools. Right. If you mark a warm pool, it returns nine years later. Oh, I see. So there's right. some of these other couplings. Could be the trade winds. Could be. Yes. Uh, we're looking at effects uh, of high pressure cells moving off the Antarctic. Yes. Could be heating in the tropics. Right. Uh, could be feedback between dust in the atmosphere during droughts and preventing rainfall. Yeah. Could be a, the fact that once you trigger rainfall, and you tend to have more El Nino, strong El Nino's yeah. than, than the other La Nina. Right. So you tend to have in Australia more stronger droughts than you do with periods. I see. And uh, there is climate, there are land air feedbacks. Right. And once you have drought in Australia and it dries out, there's a lot of dust in the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. It t tends to prolong drought. Yeah. And then once it rains, there's a lot of water falls yeah, in Australia. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and that keeps Australia damp, and yeah. darn it, once it starts raining, it continues to rain. Right. So there are those type of effects yeah. as well. So in the context of the debate about climate change at the moment, and perhaps uh, anthropogenic climate change, yeah. and CO2 enhanced greenhouse effects and so yeah. on, is, you, is, there, is there any link between El Nino and, and that? Some, some, some people do, but... Uh, what you've got to be careful is you don't take the eyes out of climate data. Right. So, hey, I, I think the globe's getting warmer, and yeah. we just had here where we stand the warmest July day in 30 years. And of course, it's winter years, here, yeah. And this is winter, yeah. so this is evidence of climate change. <laughs> you know, and what we yeah. forget is that, hey, we had a couple of days during the past six months which were the coldest on record. Right. But we don't look at those. No. So you got to be careful with El Nino that yeah. you just don't say, hey, this is the wet the, the dry phase, drought in Australia, yeah. wet in South America, this is unusual. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. And, and this is evidence of climate change. Yeah. And then you ignore the fact that Australia can have these incredible floods. Absolutely, and, yeah. And South America goes back to its old slumbering yeah. drought in the Anaconda Desert. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think there's so much noise in the system right. that over the long term, when you look at the long term to detect a signature of global warming, yeah. whether it's human-induced or natural, it's very hard when you have this wide variation right. to be able to pick up the trend, right. if there is one. If there is, if there yeah. is one. Well, thanks very much, Ted.